72 feet. <sighs> I'm tired. That's a lot of weight pulling, pulling up. But there wasn't much wind and I got a good driver. The main is up. The jib is coming out right now and the autopilot is steering. James just um, calibrated the autopilot and it looks as if it would be working. I swear that I will never take an autopilot for granted anymore, ever. six days since we left Easter Island, Rapa Nui. We're gonna make landfall tomorrow, but not at Pitcairn, but we're gonna stop at Ducey Atoll, which is just a little atoll in the middle of nowhere, no inhabitants whatsoever. But there is a possibility of entering it, depending on the swell. So we'll have to see tomorrow how that goes. All in all, we're out of chocolate, which is pretty dramatic six days into the trip. We didn't provision very well. Yesterday we had the spinnaker up for, for the first time for more than a couple hours. We had a little mishap also. It cost us a block and a shackle and a stanchion for the lifelines. But that's okay. Break it, fix it, bail it, sail it. What is it? What you is don't it? even know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Break it, fail it, fix it, sail it. We really don't have much experience on that sail, even though we've owned it for, what, almost a year now? It gets out of control super quickly. You learn as you go, as with everything, so also with the spinnaker. Yeah, you know our motto. Break it, fail it, fix it, sail it. <laughs> with the spinnaker, we were making like nine knots average or something like that. So we were screaming towards the Ducey Atoll and we're gonna make landfall there tomorrow morning at around 5 right now because we're sailing the slowest we can. It's pretty windy as you can probably hear through the microphone and uh, you can see up here the jib. This little piece of sail is the only thing that we've got up right now. The, the main is completely down and this is like reefed five times or something like that. Um, so we're doing four knots in the red direction and like that will arrive when the, when the sun goes up, when the sun rises. That's the plan anyways. We're hoping to be able to go into the Du Seattle tomorrow. Otherwise we're gonna continue to Henderson and then Pitcairn. The sail from Easter Island to Pitcairn, as we heard, was supposed to be really difficult and really uncomfortable. But it hasn't been that bad really. We've had wind all the time. No, zero hours on the motor. That is actually a lie because we had to charge the batteries a couple times because they're super messed up. And the new autopilot is um, drawing a lot. Talking about autopilot, great keyword. Because James installed the autopilot with these road signs that he clamped together and Jerry rigged a whole cabanch. And uh, it's working, it's working perfectly. The autopilot is a trooper, it's steering us through everything. It is a great relief to have a more sturdy thing there now. I think that's it. Let's hope we can, we can enter Ducey tomorrow. Even if not, we'll try to get some drone shots or maybe land a dinghy there somehow. Maybe find a place to anchor, we will see. No clue what's gonna await us there because there's not really that much um, on the internet about it. Where'd you get that necklace? Oh yeah, this was a goodbye present from Vale, our best friend in Rapa Nui, and we miss her already! Hi Vale, love you. Yeah, sad to leave Easter Island, 
but really glad to um, be seeing some more cool stuff in the Pacific. I'll show you where we are right now. We're in the middle of the Pacific, right between um, America and New Zealand. Right there, right in the middle. Do Seattle. Here we go. So this is us, obviously. This is Ducey, right here. Henderson, Pitcairn, which is more or less our final destination for the week. And this is where all this is. Oh, you can't even see. Here, that's where you guys live, probably. <laughs> and Mexico, South America, and this is us. New Zealand, right here, us in the middle. Pretty amazing stuff, huh? We can't zoom out any further. The Pacific is fucking huge, if you have never noticed. I'm very excited to be here. This was my destination when I first bought the boat. It's been almost three years. I can't wait to see Tahiti, Bora Bora, Marquesas, two motos. We're both a little sad to be leaving Spanish-speaking countries because for the last two years, over two years, we've been in Spanish-speaking countries. It helps to speak the language. We've gotten away with a lot because we speak Spanish. And now we're going into the French territories, but she speaks really good French, so I'll be hanging on your coattails for a little while. No problem. Boat needs a couple things. We need to finish some repairs and paint the deck and stuff, but... We need somebody to come down, actually, in Gambier. So by the time you see this video, it's gonna be too late, but make sure to like the Facebook page and the Instagram page. Yeah, for, for real-time up updates, you can become a patron or you can just like our, our Facebook page and that's where we post any uh, real-time updates that we need things or that we need someone to come down and bring us something and uh, you might have a week on the boat with us, bring us apart. Or two. Or two or 10 or a whole, but usually it's a whole bag full of crap. And yeah. Anything else? No, it's been great. It's been a very dry, very nice, it's albeit rough, but right now we've been going, we haven't really been beating this, ent this entire time uh, since Ecuador. So it's really nice. And now for the last 900 miles, we've been going downwind, which is really cool. But come to think, come to find out, catamarans do not sail to wind very well. Downwind. Yeah, I'm sorry, downwind, yeah. You, I, we can't. Neither of the both, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, overall, it's been a really nice passage. So, we'll see tomorrow. We overshot. We've been motoring for the last two hours to try to get back to this bastard. We tried to tack, and we were tacking through like 150 degrees. Do you see it? No, I can't see it. Where is it? It's right straight in front of us. Okay, we're motoring at about two knots direction to Seattle and um, there is only little information on the interweb that we could that we could collect. So we'll have to kind of scout this atoll out ourselves. Which um, this is the first time we've ever freaking been to an atoll. An atoll is basically a ring of coral that um, that grew around a, a volcano, and the volcano eroded over time. So there, there's basically it's gone, and all that's left is the coral around its rim now, under the surface of the water, protecting the volcano from further eroding away. The satellite picture suggests that there is an anchorage on the on the eastern side of this. On the south, there's supposed to be a boat pass, but whether it's a pass for the dinghy or for the big boat, God knows. All I can see is huge breakers on that side of the island. It looks like it drops off pretty quick here. If we could anchor like right outside of the surf, have our anchor, have the wind blowing us backwards, that, that would work. It's gonna be really hairy. I mean, those are big waves sitting there. But the problem is we have no depth sounder. 
And I think this is pretty deep water. This is really blue water here. The problem is because this is a volcano, it drops off so quickly that the waves are breaking right where we need to anchor. So we'd have to like drop our anchor right where the waves are breaking and then let the boat drift back. Let's go check, check it out. I think we'll just, we'll just go around and see. This is impressive, it looks cool. It smells so good too. After a week at sea, you can really smell the, the earth. It smells like flowers. It smells like flowers and beach. So these waves behind me are ridiculously big. They're like 12 foot waves. So we might just leave. Um, I'm not sure yet. We'll see. She's diving to see what the bottom texture is like. I gotta go and, and go back to her. What did you think of Ducey? Unfortunately, we were not able to anchor nor go ashore, um, so we didn't spend much time here. But there were a bunch of sharks, especially a white right tip reef shark about this size, and um, amber jacks about this size as well. And the most aggressive animal down there were the amber jacks. They just came like right up to me and touched me, and yeah. Really? Yeah. They came right up to me. They didn't know that they're tasty, I guess. <laughs> they didn't know that I eat them. Um, beautiful coral. And uh, yeah, it was really rough today with the waves and everything, right? So unfortunately, we're leaving it behind already. Won't be the last time. Won't be the last chance for us to explore an apple. Right? So bye, Ducey. 